Hey and hello everybody and welcome to another one of my video tutorials and um, what can I say thank you very much for everybody who's subscribing liking my channels and everybody who is contributing via the PayPal link and the uh, quick apps purchasing etc so um, I've had a request from somebody watching some of my own Home Center 2 videos about key fobs and remote keypads and things like that. And I did say that I will be doing new videos and showing you how to add these particular devices uh, along with the relevant uh, code um, for the uh, Home Center 3. So, without further ado, let's get working. Today is going to be about the Fibaro key fob. So, I'm not going to go through the um, means and outs of the key fob, um, that's all in the previous video. What I am going to do, however, is uh, show it uh, from being installed. So, installation is the same as before. Um, it just so happens that I've got a brand new key fob here which I haven't installed, so I'll show you it quickly. So, how we do it, usual settings, devices, plus, it's a Z-Wave device and it's located far and then I just click any button three times and straight away it starts adding being a battery operated device you do need to be relatively close to the home center so luckily for me where my desk is it's about two meters two and a half meters so it's not too bad so I'm just gonna wait for this to uh, completely add to the system and then uh, we're gonna continue forward one thing to note about the key fob is that by default um, the double click and triple click if I remember correctly is not enabled by default. So what we have to do is we have to actually go into the parameters and uh, set them up. Now you only need to do that, you only need to do that if you intend to use the two times and three times clicks, so doubles and triple clicks. Um, if you're only going to use a single click and hold, then those are set up by default. So um, what I'm going to do, just going to wait and uh, give it another couple of minutes for it to add. I do have a lot of stuff in my uh, home center, so uh, it might take a bit of time. So just going to pause the video and uh, come back to you when it's, uh, when it's done. Right guys. It's been added here, so here is my key fob. So this is the time where you can actually name the key fob and put it into the room of your choice. Um, as I'm, to be honest with you, I'm going to be deleting it from my system anyway, so I'm not going to bother doing that. What we're then going to do is categories remotes, which will leave that where it is, and advanced if you if you want to um, remove in showing history etc these are the quick actions so you can actually um, do a quick action here by adding a scene well it's actually going to be block scenes so you can push them in but you know what I'm like I prefer uh, lower code scenes because they're much better and easy to read and write then I've removed it from history so I'm just gonna click on save here oh lock here is where it's going to actually lock the device automatically but again if we're not going to input the code we don't need to worry about that at least the remote can be used at all times it's for those if you really want to be using the remote to um, shall we say disarm your house alarm you have to put the co effectively unlock the remote before actually running an action so that might be a useful feature if you wish to use it that way so the next thing we're going to be doing is clicking on parameters and looking at this. So lock mode, we no need to do that. It's here, scene activation. And so it's parameter 21. As you can see, the default pressing is one time and press down and release. So what we need to do is we need to go to all of these buttons and enable all the key presses. Like I said before, it's only if you are intend to use it um, for all actions. Um, if you're only using it for one and hold, 
leave it alone. You don't need to do any of that. Once you've done that, hit the save key. Once you've pressed save, you need to then wake up the remote for it to, um, shall we say, read that configuration. To do that, press the zero and the plus key together simultaneously and it will then automatically wake up and reconfigure itself. If you notice that that changed from the hourglass to a tick and the screen pop-up came showing uh, to refresh the screen. So if we go down to here, uh, you'll see that they're now saved. That's it for the install side of things. Now, the best part, coding. For, what, for that, um, as per normal, the, if you click in the link in the download section, you will find the uh, my Lua code. Click on add scene, Lua code, and we're gonna name this scene, so I'll call it key fob scenes. Category, again, change the category to whatever you like. Leave that to running and automatic scene. Yes, it's definitely an automatic scene. And then any icon, if you wish to change the icons. One thing I forgot to mention is before we do all that is we need to know the ID of the remote. So that's 798. So let's go back onto that. So what we need to do is we're going to hit the trigger. So the top section of the code, it will actually say here, um, I've actually written it on there where the triggers are and where the uh, declarations, i.e. your triggers. So copy all of it and paste it in here and then change the ID to the number that we said before, 798. Again, another reminder, VSC for Mac, Visual Studio Code for Mac, or Notepad++ if you're a Windows user. Make sure you're using one of them, otherwise the punctuation on, on here doesn't match and therefore you will get errors. So where it says conditions, declarations, that's what you need to copy and make sure you update your ID to the ID of your uh, key form. Now for actions, again, you go copy the whole thing and then we paste it into our actions on this side. So here is what's gonna happen. So if I'm gonna click on save, so that's saved. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna click on the debug window here and I'm just gonna press a key, but I'm gonna change this to key fob. That's gonna be my tag, okay? Right, there's another step that needs to be done which I've just found out and it never did this by default. So the device itself wasn't triggering straight away. So once we've done this, what you need to do is click back on devices, go to the key fob itself, click on associations and then what we need to do is we need to actually add this in manually because when I added mine in, this never came up. Because this never came up, it means that every time I press a button, it, nothing would happen in the system because the system wouldn't actually acknowledge what was going on. To do that, click on this bottom to say source endpoint and choose endpoint zero. Select group, group one. Group one is always a lifeline group. And the target device is always gonna be the controller single channel and that's it then hit add I've already done it so I'm not going to once you've done that it needs the system to wake up so what you do is you press the zero and the plus key again to wake up the device and when that happens you will uh, automatically update and save so zero plus together it will wake up and transfer the data okay now we will go back to our scenes Go back to here and we're going to click on uh, type in their key fob because I'd already pressed it and 
now when I press the different buttons as you can see now the different uh, points here at the bottom and even if I do a press and hold and double hold five press twice triple no no one two three triple five press three times two press two so these are then all the commands and then the rest I'm sure you're going to be familiar with um, if you've been watching uh, following my series of tutorials and here so this is when I press the key one now key one is the top left hand corner so it's a square key key two top right hand corner circle key three X key four triangle key five minus and key six plus so wherever it says here fibaro.debug just two dashes to room to comment out that line unless you want that line to appear in your comment section and then give a command so fibaro call so choose a device id and shall we say turn on if i can spell so turn on so i'm going to turn on my shall we say this uh, back room light which is 78 so if I say that to turn on and then all I'm going to do is copy this into that's sorry that was key two pressed once turn on and I'm going to say key one pressed once to turn off the light hit save so again, just put any command that you want it to control using your key form. So if I now click on, on there, um, back to the dashboard. So here's our device. So what I might do, I might actually move that to the back room so you can see both together. So let me just move that to the back room. Go on to that, uh, click on back room. So here's, our devices so that's my device that's the backlight so turn on see press the circle once light turns on now I'm gonna press key one which is the square square and light turned off nice and straightforward and uh, there you have it people um, just uh, um, add your code into the relevant section comment out the debug line if you don't want the debug line to show if you want it to show just leave it in write your code in and just remember to make sure you write your code and it finishes before this end otherwise it'll give you an error message so it's really in these sorts of line frames or in this case 7 and 8 or 12 onwards 16 okay So that's why you, you need to write it in. And that's it. Uh, I've made a mistake here, but I think uh, there, there it is. So just remember how you don't click on the middle of it all. So um, that's it thing. Any questions as usual, just ask. Uh, don't forget, I keep forgetting myself. If there is any questions that you wanna ask me rather than going through YouTube and in the comment section, um, if you need to discuss something, it's better to go on to my Facebook channel. And um, on there, you will find that it's going to be better than, uh, than WhatsApp. And the reason is because, at least with the Facebook channel, I can, uh, I can do drawings and comment directly. Whereas on, uh, on YouTube, it's very difficult to give you a decent response and questions, sorry, drawings and stuff like that. So just come over to this Fibara Yorkshire Automation Support Group. Just type in Yorkshire Automation Support Group on your Fibara search engine. Uh, sorry, on your Facebook search engine. And uh, you'll be able to join, uh, join us and the rest of the crew in here. And we've got a few people in here that will be able to help as well as I've got a few friends and colleagues who are installers too. Okay, um, that's it for now guys. I will... Um, speak to you all and see you all soon in the next video thanks for watching and uh, bye for now